Hi everyone, welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. The holiday season has just kicked off with the brand new holiday catalog with Stampin' Up! And I'm bringing in some flair to the wiper card using the brand new Making Christmas Bright stamp set. Here's the card we're going to be creating today. It's got a fun pop-up on it and I'm going to do a little decorating in the back as well. If you're here visiting from YouTube, you'll be able to find the cutting dimensions, pictures, and supplies for today's project down in the description bar below. Let's head over to the stamp table and let's get started on today's project. I wanted to give you a good close-up of this wiper card. You can see the mechanics down inside, but all you do is you pull the side and your greeting or your images, and in this case it's both, pop out. And then if I flip it over, you'll see that I put a white cardstock panel here, which will allow me a place to sign my card. Let's get started on putting this together. I'm going to be using my stamp and trimmer and we're going to do a little bit of scoring. Stick with me to the end of the video. I've got a couple other samples to share with you. I've cut two pieces of real red cardstock at four and a quarter by six and three quarters. You're going to be able to find all the cutting dimensions for this project down in the description of this video below if you are here from YouTube. So don't feel like you've got to write them down as we go along. I'm going to do two score lines on each panel. The first one is going to be at one inch. The Stampin' Up! paper trimmer has a wonderful ledge here at the top, which will ensure that my cardstock is straight inside the trimmer. So I'm going to line it up here at one inch and I'm going to close the clear guide. The light blade on the trimmer is for scoring and there's also a dark blade here at the bottom that's for cutting. And I love that they navigate out of the way so that you can keep both of them on the strip. And I'll score at one inch. And then I'm going to slide over to one and three quarters inch and score. I'm going to repeat that now on the second piece, one inch and then one and three quarters inch. The next step is a small piece of coordinating cardstock that measures two by two and three quarters. We're going to make a very small score line here in the corner to create the bend for the mechanism of the wiper or the pop-up in this case. At the half inch mark of my trimmer, I'm going to line the point. I'm also then going to make sure that the cardstock is straight, that this edge and this edge meet those black lines here and here. And then I'm going to close that and then I'm going to score. That's going to give us a very small score line here at the corner. The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to bend it back and forth to break down the cardstock fibers. That's going to allow that wiper to slide up and down a lot easier. I'm going to bring in the Knight of Navy ink pad and I've mounted the greeting from the stamp set that says friends make the season shine. So I'm going to go ahead and ink that up and that's going to get stamped all the way here near the top of that real red piece. The next step is going to be some die cutting and I'm using the layering ovals framelits. I really love these, not just because there are cascading sizes, but also because they come with scallop ovals as well. Makes them really great to create cards and layers easily. I'm choosing the two largest dies that are inside the framelits. I'm going to be using the magnetic platform to help hold these metal dies in place. You're going to need a clear cutting mat on the bottom to protect it. And I've got a piece of white and a piece of real red cardstock. And I'm going to place the smaller die on the white and the larger die on the red. The great thing about the Big Shot is I'm able to get both dies on the platform at the same time. I'm going to put another clear mat over the top and then I'm going to crank this through. On the Whisper White Oval, this is where I'm going to be doing some stamping. I'm going to be using Designer Series Paper from the annual catalog that's called Under the Mistletoe. The annual catalog, the designer series papers start here around page 188 and you'll see that designer series paper here. Lots of fun and nostalgic patterns. If you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you would like a copy of the current annual catalog and the new holiday catalog that debuted on September 5th, just leave me a comment below. I'll be happy to send you a complimentary copy. To coordinate with the designer series paper, I brought in those same ink pads. So I'm going to be using real red, 
Knight of Navy, and Old Olive using the Making Christmas Bright stamp set. Isn't this fun? The great thing about this is it has a coordinating light bulb punch. It's gonna make it a lot easier than having to fussy cut these images. From that stamp set, I've pulled out this curved line, which is what my light bulbs are gonna hang on. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink that up. Photopolymer stamps are gonna make it really easy for placement. I'm gonna place that down here, leaving a little room at the top for my greeting. And while I have that ink pad out, I'll go ahead and ink up the words, Making Spirits Bright. All the images I'm using today are all from that exact same stamp set. I'm gonna set that aside and I'm gonna bring in a scrap piece of Whisper White cardstock. And I'm gonna bring out the real red ink pad first. And I've mounted that light bulb image. So I'm gonna ink that up. And I'm gonna stamp two of these just to make it easier when I use the punch. So there's one. And there's two. Well, that one didn't come out very good now that I'm looking at it, so let's restamp that. It's the great thing about using scrap cardstock. I've cleaned my stamp right off camera on my Stampin' Chamois, and I'm gonna bring in now the Old Olive ink. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna stamp three of these. So I'm gonna do that on the other side of that scrap piece. So I've got one here and another, and I'm leaving a little bit of space just to compensate for the punch. I also have a small piece of silver foil sheet and I'm going to do some stamping on there as well and I'm using that small base of the light bulb image and I want to stamp on the foil but you're going to need to use stays on ink. This is a solvent based ink so it's going to make sure that it dries on here. The regular dye based pads will not dry on here and leave you lots of smears. So I'm going to go ahead and use that and I'm going to ink that up. And I know that I have a total of five light bulbs that I'm gonna be using, so I'm gonna stamp five of these. I've just cleaned this on my chamois off camera. It's important that you get the ink off right away. Even though you used stays on ink, do not use stays on cleaner on your photopolymer stamps. It'll create a chemical reaction that's not good for the stamp itself. Stampin' Up! has placed an additive in our photopolymer that's gonna allow you to use stays on safely, just cleaning it with Stampin' Mist and water. This is gonna need a few minutes to dry, so I'm gonna set that aside while I work on the rest of my card. Going back to these images, I'm gonna bring out that punch and I'm gonna punch out the light bulbs. You're gonna see that I'm concentrating pretty much on the top. I'm gonna to use that white area here to put those bases on. I'm gonna slide those off to the side and I've cut another piece of Whisper White cardstock. This will be for the back of my card and I'm gonna use the Knight of Navy ink for this. And again, from that exact same stamp set, there's this real cute spiral string of lights. You can see how large this is. So I'm gonna make sure that I travel very carefully to make sure I get the whole image inked up. If it's easier for you, turn the image face up on your work surface and ink it this way. I'm gonna stamp that here near the top, leaving room for me to do a handwritten message. Remember our two red cardstock panels. Let's go ahead and crease those up. You're gonna to wanna to use a bone folder so you get some real nice crisp creases here. So the line that's in the center, you're gonna to fold towards the inside. And I'm gonna go over it with that bone folder. And then the outside score line is gonna come back on itself. So you're gonna see it kind of makes like the letter Z. And the same thing on this one, it's gonna come inside. And then this last one is gonna go outside. We're gonna end up adhering these by flipping these and putting them together to make that opening for the wiper card. I've slid my grid paper all the way up into the camera view so that you can see how I'm going to measure this. Before you adhere it, make sure you have this correct. So the front panel should be coming forward and this should be what's called a valley fold. So there's a V here. I'm grabbing a pencil and at the one and three quarter inch mark, which is here, I'm gonna make a small tick mark directly across from it. That's gonna give me an idea of the placement of where I need to put that small piece of cardstock that's gonna be the wiper. And this is that tab we're gonna place some liquid glue on. I prefer to use liquid glue because it gives me a little bit of wiggle room before it dries. This then is gonna get lined up here near the pencil mark between the two score lines. So I'm gonna let that sit for just a second and let that dry. While that's drying, let's go ahead and adhere the designer series paper to the front of our card. So I'm gonna flip that over 
and I've got my designer series paper here and I'm going to use snail adhesive for that. If you want to use the liquid glue that's totally fine. I'm going to be fairly generous because I want to make sure that those edges don't lift. And this is going to leave just a small margin of real red cardstock all the way around. I'm going to go ahead and bring in my silicone craft sheet. And those light bulb pieces are pretty small, so I'm going to lay those here so that you can see them better. What's even smaller yet are those small bases that we stamped here. I'm going to be using my Take Your Pick pickup tool to help me put these together. And wait till you see how great this is going to work. But that same punch will punch out these bases. So I'm going to line those up and I'm going to punch those out. I'm going to be using glue dots for this to make it a lot easier. So I'm going to fold back the paper to reveal one glue dot. They might be a little bit difficult to see in the video because they're clear. I'm going to use my pickup tool. That tacky tip is going to allow that to stick very nicely. I'm going to press that right on top of there. There's an interchangeable base that goes here at the bottom. There's a lock and unlock mechanism. So if you turn this, you can actually take it out and you can turn it over and you can use the spatula end, which will help you get up underneath those glue dots. Then I'm able to adhere those here to the bottom of my light bulb. And I'm going to do that on every single one. Once those are adhered, I'm going to go ahead and flip those over and I'm going to add mini dimensionals to the back of all of these except for one green one. I'm going to leave that to the side and we're going to use that on our pop-up. So here I've got my mini dimensionals. So I'll go ahead and I'll place one at the top and one at the bottom of each of those light bulbs. I prefer my paper piercing tool to help me pick these up. So I'm going to interchange these tips. I'm going to slide this down to the unlock mechanism, pull that out, put that end in, and then twist it. Really a quick way to be able to use your tool in lots of different fashions. I'm going to flip these over and I'm going to start with a red one. I'm just going to take off those paper backings really quick. And then I'm going to line these up here right on top of this strand and place those along the edge. Leaving this here on, I'm going to mount this on that second layer. I'm going to flip that over. I'm going to add adhesive to the back side. One of my light bulbs is hanging off the edge just a little bit, which is going to be okay because it's going to fall on the base of our card. And then remember, this is the front, so I'm going to attach that here with some more adhesive. And that's going to go right here in the center. On my original card, you're going to see how I added that little bit of illumination. There's actually a stamp for that, but since I stamped this one a little bit low, it's not going to fit on most of these. So I'm going to eliminate that step in today's video. But just to give you a tip on how I did this, it being photopolymer, it's very easy to line up. But I stamped off a layer of ink on my scratch paper so that it would be lighter when I stamped it here on the cardstock. I've also cut a strip of the same designer series paper that's going to go here on that edge just to finish it off. I'm going to go ahead and add a little adhesive to the back side of this as well. And that's going to go right here. This is the back half of our card. I'm going to simulate how we're going to put this together. So we're looking to create that rectangle shape down inside for the pop-up to come out. I prefer to use either tear and tape or liquid glue. So I'm going to place it here so I can see exactly where the perimeter is. Then I'm going to lay this down to mimic it the very best that I can. And the great thing about the liquid glue is if you're a little bit off, you can shift it a little bit before it dries. And then I'll make sure I press those together. Give that just a second to dry. And then I'm going to come over here and do the same thing on this panel. I'm going to flip it over and rub from the back. And then you're going to see how this works. All right, let's flip this over and let's add that extra piece of white cardstock that we stamped before. And I'm going to switch over to my adhesive because it's a larger area and that's what I prefer. Making sure my light bulbs are at the top. I've got plenty of room now to hand write a message. That's going to go on the back side. Now the pop up here, you can leave it just like it is or we can add that extra light bulb that we created, which is what I did on my original sample. I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to add one here at the very bottom of that light bulb base. I'm going to take off that paper backing and I'm going to line that right up here. You want to make sure your dimensional doesn't hang off the back. And then that'll be tucked down inside when your card is hidden and then pulled back up 
when your card is done. Now here's the one we created today without the illumination lines. Here's the one I created before you joined me. You can see all I did was I just moved that line up just a little bit. As a tip going forward, stamp your greeting first, then you'll know exactly how far down you need to put that line to hold those light bulbs. Really a cute card and a great surprise in their holiday mail. I promised that I had some other samples to share with you. This was made for me and it was actually my inspiration to learn the wiper card from my customer Tammy. So you can see this is an adorable birthday card. She actually sent this to me for my birthday and again her greeting is on the back. And this card was made for me by my customer Bonnie and it was sent to me as a thank you card. Adorable variations on different themes, but a real fun interactive card. Remember down in the description bar below, you'll find a link that will navigate you to the cutting dimensions, pictures, and the supplies used on today's project. Thanks so much for joining me, everyone. I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.